Hello, this is Peter Hoffman, and this is class number four in using glass paints. And um, I've got the painting started here. I just wanted to show you the different kinds of paints that you can use. They come in many different forms. Many come in little bottles like this. And this is Vitrol, which is one of the biggest companies that makes them. A uh, really good company. And then we have the Chinese version. It comes, you can buy them in tubes. And uh, then you have these, uh, Frida. And these are some of the first ones I got. Actually, the first ones I got, I don't use anymore. They were somewhat uh, primitive. They came in containers like this. And uh, they dry out pretty quick. You got to be real careful with them. I still have a few, but um, I recommend the bottles. You can tighten them better, and uh, they won't uh, dry out. And but I'm going to show you a little bit. The I the good thing about these Frida bottles. See, this one's been left, uh, and see this good paint here. This would be good to to just put down. And, uh, you know, like I said, you don't have to use a brush, okay? So, the idea, and see how thick this paint is? Thick paint is, is very good to have uh, because you want to create contrast. Contrast is hard to get with stained glass. You know, you, the glass offers contrast, but we're not using different kinds of glass. We're just dependent on the paint itself to create the uh, the change in uh, in contrast and so we uh, if it's too transparent it looks really boring it's not going to be good so let's try to thicken the paint up a little bit get it uh, on there a little thicker than it can be you know the one thing about Okay, this is a new one, so I really need a knife, and I, again, I don't have a knife, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, you can keep these in water, or you can use turpinoid. That's a good way to clean these brushes. All right, and uh, these brushes have been cleaned already, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Use this right here. See this paint, this dried paint actually will uh, link up with uh, the glass here. So I'm going to just pretend this is a rock down here and we're going to leave that alone. We're going to leave that on there. And uh, this paint here, this paint here, we're going to leave that. And uh, yeah, good. So I really didn't need to open that anyway. I'm just going to show you the paint. But Right now, I, I want to show you the different other kinds. This is um, very simple to open and close and to seal. And this has been used many times. This one's almost empty. And so, uh, I'm just giving you the uh, rundown on a few different types of paint. This one uh, is you got to apply it with a brush. You don't have the tube effect like you would with the other one. But you can still get really thick. The tube allows you to get it real thick, but this you can get real thick too. You just have to be careful as you apply it with a brush. Kind of get it into a uh, blob there. And uh, see, you can already see the neat effect that we're getting by letting one layer dry, putting another layer on top. Now these are all the same color, which um, I'm trying to. I'm going to try to show you not to do that all the time. So we're going to switch from yellow. We're going to go to red, and red is the one color that's missing here. I don't know if you noticed, but we don't have any red down here. So we're going to get some red into the project and uh, we got the this red which is really 
Oh man, this is a metallic red. We got metallic colors too. I'm not too sure if I want to use the metallic colors. These I picked out here. These are the reds here using this uh, one of my favorite. Frida is one of those that I've used a lot of. And uh, again, all of these you're supposed to push down and then pull up. Now, see, it's got this little cap, which I really don't like too much because it tends to break. That one did not. So I keep that there. It's a sealer cap. And by the way, uh, again, we can go ahead and just put it into one of these because I'd rather use the bigger brush than that small one. And uh, here we're going to put the red. All right, this is like the blood of Christ. And so, but it's going to be, it's going to be uh, also radiating. And uh, it's going to be pretty well relegated to this one area. Come on over here, guy. All right. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, this, uh, System, it says it's supposed to follow your movement, but it doesn't want to follow the movement, does it? It's like it's looking for me always. So, we're going to go ahead. Right now, It's I don't like the pattern that I've created, so I'm going to go over it a few times to uh, regenerate the pattern we want. We want it to be radiating downward. From up there like that pretty much like light and uh, that's fine if I'm going off the, the line I'm going to create my own line no problem yeah that's good so we we have uh, done that we're going to do this see it's not symmetrical and that's the one of the, it, it makes the painting interesting, I think, to break the symmetry and to create interest, uh, mystery, or whatever. So you get a little bit of, uh, see, I didn't follow the perfect line there, but it's all right. That's why I put these lines in here, because I knew the red, I did not want to bleed, bleed over too much. That's pretty interesting. use of the word red bleeding over okay no I can see I can hear it turn turn back over here okay so that's the red now I am going to put some of the red on the cross because what did I say red blue and yellow makes brown so we don't mind getting some red on the cross In fact, I may just put it in particular areas and not try to, you know, get it perfect uh, like we would in the other. So this is how the cross is going to have the red. Okay, so we've got to seal these things. We don't want to leave them open too long. And I, I need to, it's hard to remember, but you should put this little cap back on. Uh, I'm just going to keep it safe longer from drying out all right so there it is right now it looks pretty pretty bad because it's uh, very simplistic and uh i really don't like the way it looks right now um i can show you on uh, some other ones that i have done so that you can get an idea of what it's supposed to look like well actually here's one somewhat of of what we're doing but this is with on a window with the shadows of the glass, the sun, and the shadow shining through. So it throws you off. This is one here uh, that was, is also covering a window, blocking the light. And you can see a lot of this was done where my finger is here. It's where the, I use a knife to create the shape. I use a, actually a knife for the eyes too. Here's one with a lot of detail showing a whale, a porpoise, birds and stuff. 
That's a five day, or six days of creation. This is the stars, sun and moon and all that, and the trees. So, oh, here it is. Here's the, the wandering planets, the sun, moon, and so forth. So this gives you an example. You can also do ab pure abstract. You can do, you know, the Van, the Van Gogh look, this Tiffany look. One of my uh, students did the Tiffany look. One of my students did this. And uh, this is... The, this is a Van Gogh, but really abstract, and crosses, of course. And then, you know, you can mimic, in fact, you can even do the painting on ceramic, but you can mimic art like this with uh, glass painting. And you can even paint ceramic and cook it like this. So that's an example of it. But, um, well, there you go. You've got uh, lesson number four. And uh, we will see you for lesson number five.